All right, so now it's time to set up our different export presets. Let's get started. We're going to set up our first one, which is going to be our print export preset. We're going to right click, go down to export, go to export, <laughs> export, export. All right, we need to get to the export dialog, which is right here. We're going to select export to hard drive, unless you guys feel like you want to export to another location. But this is where we set up all of our default export functions to go to, to the hard drive. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go and dial in our settings, and then we're going to save these all out. Now, I like to have this actually export to a specific folder. I know this says choose folder later, useful for presets, but we're going to show you a quick and easy way to select a folder uh, and to export and so that you don't have to actually choose that folder after you hit the export button. All right, so let's select specific folder. We're going to leave this defaulted to the desktop, okay? So that way it brings up the desktop every time. Now we're starting with the print size folder, so we're gonna or the print size export, so we're gonna label this 01 print sized. And you're gonna understand this naming system in one sec after we finish the entire export process and show you how it looks. If you don't already understand now. Alright, so when it finds existing files, we want to keep this on ask what to do. So it notifies us if it finds files that it needs to overwrite because they have the same names. Okay, so it'll let us overwrite or skip or do whatever we need, and it'll let us know. Now, with file renaming, we don't need to rename because we're going to leave this uh, on the actual file name. So it's actually going to default this to the file name that we have already selected, which we've already renamed our images, which is great. We're not going to have it do any file naming. All right, now for our file settings, we don't need video settings, by the way, because we're exporting stills. For file settings, we're going to select image format, JPEG, quality, 100. Color space, I would recommend you guys set this to sRGB unless you know that your lab can print Profiler RGB, because if not, they're just going to convert it back anyway. A lot of labs like Costco and all these other places, especially the less expensive labs, they're, they're converting and using sRGB anyway, so just leave it there. If you know your lab can handle Profoto RGB, this is the default Lightroom color space, so obviously that's the better choice if you're printing from a lab that supports it. All right, so we're going to leave that defaulted to sRGB. By the way, for the most part, it's really difficult to tell the difference anyway. All right, let's go down to image sizing. We don't want this to resize, so uncheck the resize. We want a resolution at 300 pixels per inch. This is print size. We want to make it work regardless of the printer it's going to. Now some printers, like say a canvas printer, might only print at 150 dpi or pixels per inch. Some might print at 240 on paper. Some might print at 300, but we want to leave it at the highest setting so that those that do print at 300 can take advantage of the additional resolution. Otherwise, if you print say 150 pixel per inch resolution on a uh, printer that does 300 pixels per inch, well, if you get that image too large, it's going to look all pixelated and not very sharp, okay? So just leave it at 300. All right, now let's go down to output sharpening. We're going to dial this down to matte paper and put it on low because we want to do a little bit of output sharpening based on the type of medium that we're exporting to. But we don't want to do too much because we don't necessarily have control over exactly how much uh, you know sharpening this is doing. So just set it to low. All right, now for metadata, what we're going to do is include either copyright only or copyright and contact info only. But we don't want, like say, our clients getting DVDs that have all of the camera info and then them spreading the DVDs to other people and then everybody basically get these DVDs that has all the metadata included on those images. So we limit this to just basically copyright only. If you guys want, you can include contact info as well, but I'd recommend not including anything else. Okay, now at this point, we don't need any watermarking. Let's make sure that that's off. And post-processing, you can have Lightroom open up a, a Windows or a Finder window if you guys want after it finishes exporting, but we don't use that, so we're just going to leave it as do nothing. If you guys remember, we previously set up our preferences to notify us when it actually finishes exporting. So it's going to play a sound when it finishes exporting anyway. I don't necessarily need it to open up the uh, window to see those files. So that's great right there, guys. We have set up our print size settings. Now we're going to go to Add. We're going to select a folder and we're going to choose a new folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this folder based on whatever workflow I'm designing it for. So let's say this is for SR Lounge workflow. Well, let's say it's for our studio workflow because that would make more sense. So we'll say LJP Linen Jersa workflow as our folder. And we're going to label this first preset as 01 print sized. Hit create. And we're done now with that print size export. We're not going to export yet. We're going to do that at the very end. Let's go on to the next video where we set up our web sized export preset.